FireVault's disk encryption has evolved over time, sometimes making it feel like a daunting topic of macOS management. Luckily, Jamf Pro can help ensure managed computers are kept encrypted and recovery keys are kept safe. My name is Jeremy, and welcome to the module on administering FileVault with Jamf Pro. Since its initial release with OS X Lion, FileVault 2 has undergone some changes, like the introduction of Secure Token, Bootstrap Token, and Volume Ownership, for example. Luckily, these are not anything that need to be actively managed or manipulated in an organization. In this video, we discuss how to use Jamf Pro to turn on FileVault, securely store recovery keys, and reissue new recovery keys. The demonstrations in this video focus on managing FileVault with Jamf Pro 10.30 or later and computers with macOS 10.15.4 or later. Several areas of Jamf Pro are mentioned throughout this guide, so if you're unfamiliar with smart computer groups, scope, configuration profiles, or policies, we recommend checking out the respective modules for each topic. First, let's consider the scenario where computers are enrolled, but Jamf Pro hasn't been used to manage FileVault. Advanced computer searches are helpful for generating and exporting reports on FileVault attributes in computer inventory records. I'm using smart groups in this demonstration, which can be used when determining the scope for certain management actions later in the video. Navigate to Computers, Smart Computer Groups, and let's create a new one for computers that don't have FileVault turned on. In the Criteria tab, click the Add button, then Show Advanced Criteria, and choose FileVault 2 Status. Set the operator to Is Not, then click the Browse button, and choose Boot Partitions Encrypted from the list of possible values. Click Save, and we have a smart group for all computers that are not encrypted. Next, let's create a smart group to determine if there are any FileVault-enabled computers that don't have a valid recovery key stored in Jamf Pro. This can occur if a user turns on FileVault before it's administered by Jamf. In the Criteria tab, click the Add button, Show Advanced Criteria, and choose FileVault 2 Individual Key Validation. In the Operator pop-up menu, choose Is Not. Then use the Browse button and choose Valid from the list of possible values. Save this group and we are ready to begin scoping management actions. FileVault can be administered by Jamf Pro with configuration profiles and policies. Configuration profiles are the simplest and can be scoped broadly. They also have the ability to require FileVault, preventing users from turning it off. However, recovery keys aren't escrowed until the next computer inventory update. Using a policy to enable disk encryption quickly redirects recovery keys to Jamf Pro and allows for customizing the user experience, like policy messaging and forced logouts or restarts. But this only turns on FileVault, and users with administrative privileges would still be able to unlock system settings and turn off FileVault without a configuration profile preventing it. Take all of this into consideration when determining how to administer FileVault in your organization. Let's first see what it's like to administer FileVault with a configuration profile. Navigate to Computers and Configuration Profiles. Let's create a new one to require FileVault, create a personal recovery key, and redirect the key back to Jamf Pro. I'm naming mine FileVault on, adding it to the security category, and leaving the distribution method to be installed automatically at the computer level. Scroll down in the list of payloads and click Security and Privacy, select FileVault, then click the switch to include the setting to enable FileVault. This setting turns on FileVault at login by default, which is beneficial because a user must enable FileVault before using the computer. Next, scroll down and click the switch to include the setting to escrow personal recovery key. This will redirect the personal recovery key to Jamf Pro for safekeeping, so enter something like your organization's name for the escrow location description. I'm just using Jamf Training. Next, click Scope and we can add the built-in smart group for all managed clients as the target of this configuration profile. Click Save, and once the configuration profile is installed, FileVault will be enabled the next time a user tries to log in, and the recovery key will be escrowed to Jamf Pro on the next inventory update. Let's take a look at the user experience. The configuration profile to force FileVault is installed silently. Then the next time a user tries to log in, a dialog appears stating they must enable FileVault to continue. Clicking Cancel just takes them back to the login window, 
so FileVault must be enabled before they can use the computer. Next, let's see what it's like to administer FileVault with a policy. Before we create the policy, we need to create a disk encryption configuration to be deployed. Navigate to Settings, Computer Management, and Disk Encryption Configurations, and create a new one. Select a recovery key type, Individual is Personal, and leave current or next user selected as the enabled FileVault user, then name this appropriately. I'm calling mine FileVault Personal. Click Save and navigate to Computers, Policies, and create a new one. Select the disk encryption payload and click Configure. Leave Apply Disk Encryption Configuration selected as the action. Choose the disk encryption configuration we recently created and require FileVault at next login. If you want to ensure a user must log in and enable FileVault before they can continue to use the computer, Jamf Pro can force a restart. Click the Restart Options payload, click Configure, and choose to restart immediately if no user is logged in and restart if a user is logged in. The default delay of 5 minutes notifies users of the scheduled restart giving them time to save their work. We can also modify the restart message in the User Interaction tab to let users know what's happening. Now that we have our payloads configured, navigate back to the Options tab and scroll back up to General. I'm naming mine FileVault Restart and Enable It Login and assigning it to the Security category. Then consider when to trigger the policy. If we want FileVault to be enabled as soon as possible, we can select Enrollment Complete and Recurring Check-In. So as soon as the computer enrolls, or within 15 minutes at the next check-in, this policy will initiate. Leave the execution frequency at once per computer, and in the Scope tab, we can add a target of the Smart Computer Group created earlier for computers with FileVault turned off. Click Save, and computers will be forced to restart, and users must enable FileVault when logging in. Also with this setup, recovery keys are redirected to Jamf Pro immediately at the login event. Let's take a look at the user experience. The policy to restart the computer and deploy a disk encryption configuration runs at next check-in, with the restart message appearing first. After the computer restarts, users must enable FileVault when they log in. In the event a recovery key is needed to unlock the computer or reset a user's password to gain access, it can be found in a computer's inventory record. Navigate to Computers, search for and select that computer, then select Disk Encryption under Inventory. Click the Show Key button next to Personal Recovery Key to reveal it. Since the recovery key has now been viewed and is essentially compromised, this action is logged by Jamf Pro and can be found by clicking the History tab and viewing the audit logs. If the recovery key in Jamf Pro matches the one on the computer, we can use another policy to reissue new recovery keys. Navigate back to Policies, create a new one, give it a name, select a category, and Trigger, and leave the execution frequency at once per computer. Then select the disk encryption payload and click Configure. This time, select Issue New Recovery Key as the action and choose which recovery key type to issue which would be individual in this case. Click the Scope tab and add the computer with a compromised recovery key. When the policy runs, the computer will generate a new recovery key that gets redirected back to Jamf Pro. Now consider the scenario where a user may have turned on FileVault before it could be managed by Jamf Pro. Even though FileVault is already enabled, you'll likely want the personal recovery key to be escrowed as well. While Jamf Pro can't issue a new recovery key without knowing the previous one, there are workflows to have a new key generated and escrowed to Jamf Pro. For example, there's a handy script that can be found on the Jamf GitHub repository that prompts a FileVault enabled user for their password and generates a new recovery key using the FDE setup binary. Thanks to the configuration profile created and deployed earlier, the new recovery key would be escrowed back to Jamf Pro at the next inventory update. It's recommended to deploy this script with the policy in self-service, where additional dialogues and alerts can steer users toward it. For more information, check out the module on deploying basic scripts in the Jamf Online Training Catalog. By administering FileVault with Jamf Pro, 
organizations can ensure their users' data is encrypted and recovery keys are kept secure. There are several different ways to manage FileVault, so take all into consideration before deploying. That's all for the video on administering FileVault with Jamf Pro. Be sure to continue exploring other Jamf Pro training modules. Thanks for watching.